Hello, everyone. Thank you so very much for joining me for this week's episode of Screw the Cubicle TV. And I am filming from Bangkok. I'm here for a few days before I jump to a plane to Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, and it's been amazing being at this chaotic but lovely city. Uh, and I wanted to film you something before I jump on that plane. And today's topic is really about a question that I get quite often. Uh, and again, people are telling me all sorts of things about why um, uh, it's been difficult for people to transition from the cubicle and a lot of the times people are asking for you know what's the great plan what's the great strategy what can i do as a side hustle and there's a lot of these sort of practical tips that i'm sure if you've been watching my youtube channel here or you've watched webinars or any training in, in the past you know that i do give a lot of those of those answers in a step-by-step -step plan but today i want to talk about something even more important than that because i know that it doesn't actually matter if you receive the best exit strategy plan, uh, the best business idea, what is actually the most important thing is really your mindset and your approach and your belief that allows you to actually execute on big plans. So uh, having a big, big plan and having a great strategy just sometimes doesn't actually save you because what's actually going to motivate and inspire us to continue to persevere for our goals uh, in our career and in our life change is always up here the mental preparation. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to break down for you some simple things that I think if you focus on them and you get some clarity on, it's then going to make things like creating a plan and strategic moves about getting out of your cubicle or starting a business to be a lot easier to accomplish when we actually start with getting our mental preparation ready. So here we go. I'm going to show you these quick little steps, uh, but also something you can reflect on before the end of this video. Okay, mental preparation number one. Decide on what you want. Now, I don't actually mean, you know, you're deciding on your forever life plan because by the way, nobody knows what that is until you end up living your life. But you can decide on what hasn't been working for you in your current work, uh, workplace, your current lifestyle choices, whatever it is that sort of prompted you for a decision to, to change your life. What were those prompts? What was the main reason for you to, to be even exploring options uh, other than what is happening in your life right now? Now, deciding on what you want means that you are preparing yourself for a destination that you want to go to. Of course, you can't create goals. You can't even be gauging if you're accomplishing any of these goals if you don't really know where your goals are leading you towards. And that may not be a one or two thing sort of thing. You know, it could be actually a description uh, of different details that you want to have in your life. So thinking about your career, thinking about your community, thinking about support systems you need, thinking about uh, lifestyle choices that you want to have. What would be an ideal life for you in all those different aspects, whether it's financial relationships and all the things I just mentioned, right? When you can get into the detail of what these things consist of, then you can paint a much more ideal picture for yourself and make it real for yourself to be working towards those things. Then you can actually construct important goals for you to meet in those aspects of your life. So deciding on what you want is Really, the, a good thing, a way to do it if you don't know what you want is decide on what you don't want. <laughs> That's sometimes the easiest way to start. Think about all the things that frustrate you in your, in your workplace right now. Think about all the things that frustrate you in your career. Think about all the things in your life that sort of isn't aligned with your deepest values. What are those things and make a list of them? Because the first, this first step of mental preparation is starting to allow you to think about the future, think about what can change, which like I've mentioned, can allow you to then construct the right goals that meets you uh, uh, meets the, the choices that you want to make and also ideally once you see them through can lead you to that experience that you, you, you are so dreaming about today. So start with that. All right, the second thing for mental preparation is very related to the first one of deciding what you want, which is also decide what the real exchange is for you. And what I mean by exchange is that, well, if you are going towards a life change, you are exchanging an old way of behaving, an old way of living, an old way of how you used to make a living, perhaps, or how you live your life with something new. Uh, why, why are you having that exchange? Why would you like something new? So it's very related to the, to the first piece I mentioned about deciding what you want. 
one. Now, the difference here is that extra little detail of really on an internal level, on a personal level, understanding why you would trade, for example, a secure job that you've been working hard for, for something else, whether it's entrepreneurship or freelance work or working for a new company. Um, what are you exchanging specifically when you construct these goals? You know, so every time that we make a, a life change in our lives in any areas, we are exchanging an old way of living for a new one. And what is that motivating factor for you? What motivates you for that change? Now, why we go with the word exchange is because in my opinion, it's not a sacrifice. You're not sacrificing a secure job, for example, for something new, because sacrifice implies that you're giving up something you want, right? And all of you that are here very likely are not giving up something you want because if not, you wouldn't be here in the first place. So you really need to truly understand what is that personal reason for you to make this life change so that it motivates you when the going gets tough, when you hit a wall, uh, when you have doubt about whether or not you're going into the right path, you can check with yourself well I'm doing this because I want to get this instead and this is why I'll make my life better now Mark Manson who you might already know uh, and I'm I, I, one of my favorite writers in the online blogging world right now and of, of course the author of amazing books Mark Manson did a great uh, blog post about uh, forgot what the title was but it was around what shit sandwich are you willing to eat and the whole truth of the matter is anything that you choose in life will consist of a shit sandwich nothing is always perfect so the best thing and ideal thing you can do is actually choosing a shit sandwich you're willing to swallow or willing to swallow uh, because that's at least giving you an experience that you truly want and you're willing to take the shit sandwich that comes with it knowing that all choices come with a shit sandwich but certain shit sandwiches are easier for some of us to digest than others depending on what that is so decide your shit sandwich so for example for me my shit sandwich was I'm willing to give up a six-figure job and that is security but it you know what trumps that shit sandwich is I'm able to swallow that because I know that on a freedom of choice level uh, and the fact that I can work from anywhere that is a higher value for me than I place on security right so that is part of this shit sandwich question and deciding the exchange uh, question is that why are you making these decisions and what higher values do do these decisions align with so that you can consistently know that when you hit a tough spot you can check in with those values check in with that shit sandwich you're willing to swallow and really bring yourself back into reality of why you're doing what you're doing okay the third mental preparation step to help you transition is learning how to experiment and play now, a lot of you are also probably here because you're trying to find out what you're good at. You're trying to find out what you can do to utilize your existing experience and skill sets to build something new with your career. And playing and experimenting is also part of that formula. In order to know what you want, in order to know what you enjoy, in order to know what your passions are, you really can't just sit there and brainstorm about it on a notebook. You have to do things. Clarity comes from action. You've probably heard me say this in other videos before. Um, and learning to play and experimenting is really learning to be humble again a lot of the times when we've been um, in a particular industry for a long time or have been depending on our resume for our identities we really need to take a bit of a pause and step away from what uh, society and what our professional resume had dictated is our talents uh, and in order to sort of know where your hidden talents are how you could repurpose your talents uh, or experiment with something that you do as a hobby but might could potentially be paid to do it as uh, a way of making a living you're not really going to be able to know if that's true for you until you do uh, and being in a full-time job is great because this is sort of your security while you work on a side hustle and it can fund uh, your dreams of really building a business for example but when you're in the stage of figuring out what business you should be building what am I good at am I gonna enjoy this work for a long period of time you'll have to start testing it so if you can imagine as we climbed the corporate ladder you know and as we got the promotions and all the different uh, titles that we ever received in uh, in our working life it required time and work and entrepreneurship isn't any different when you start on your first year of business the reality check is that you are an intern in your company you're not going to promote yourself to CEO uh, or you know director of your company until you've done the ground up right of what are the things that is um, that needs to be done in a company and do all the uh, so-called so you know tough work in the beginning because you're just starting out in year one grade one of your business so being humble and being able to sort of say I don't have any expectations you know of where things can go but allowing myself to play allowing myself to build my expertise and build my skill set is one of the best ways in 
uh, to know what you're good at, but also be in the vicinity of action to allow you to perform those skills to understand if you love it or not. So learn to play, learn to experiment, and that's a really, really good way to get clarity on what you love doing and what your passions are. All right, the last tip for how to mentally prepare yourself for the transition is not to do any of it alone. A lot of us feel, especially if we're managers and we have been quite a, uh, in a senior level in our corporate gig, uh, we are not used to asking for help because we're the ones that are the perfectionists, we're the ones that are usually the sought after leaders in our personal life or in the workplace. Uh, so if you're just like me where you know it's hard for you to ask for help, I wanna encourage you uh, to not do it, do it alone when it comes to uh, building a business or finding uh, a way to make a living outside of the cubicle. And why don't you want to do it alone? Well, one, it's not really fun to do it alone. You can talk yourself out of things. You can doubt yourself. This is really new territory for you. So the best thing to do at this point uh, in, in your uh, seeking of answers is to try to get feedback, try to be able to have a community of people that care for your outcomes, that understand what you're going through and possibly are also doing what you're doing, you know, learning to side hustle or learning to build a business while they're working full time. Now, if you're missing a community that's physical in your area, I run one called The Unconventionalist. It's completely free. It's on Facebook called, you can type it in, The Unconventionalist. I'll show it somewhere here on the screen and you can join for free and start talking about your dreams in this community. Community. Now, the great thing about being a part of a community and not doing it alone is that you're not going to self-sabotage as often because you're going to be held accountable uh, to what you do or don't do in, in, in your life change goals. Uh, if you share it with people, you involve more people in your decision making in your life, you're going to get a lot more support. And none of us as humans want to do it alone or can do it alone. The other point is that you only know what you know. So if you are not an entrepreneur and you're trying to be one and you don't have any other entrepreneurs to ask questions from, of course you won't know the answer and you're going to find days, if not weeks or years, Googling those answers and not really finding certain things that are related to your circumstance. So start talking to other humans, start getting a buddy that's going through a similar journey and start talking about these goals and helping each other out. Be part of communities, sign up for a mentorship program, whatever it takes, know that you can can expedite your learning so much more efficiently, cut the crap, no, less of the research and go straight to the answers. And But you do need to mentally prepare yourself and tell yourself that I, to get to success, need other people to support me. It truly takes a village. And I want to support you. So go on into the unconventionalist and I'll be there. I'll make sure to help you along the way of your change journey. Thank you so very much, first of all, for join, joining me for this video. Um, I think it's such a great uh, topic to talk about because a lot of the times you can get caught up on uh, strategic plans, you know, business idea plans, business plans, marketing strategies that we lose sight of sort of the root of our problem sometimes is our mindset and it's our approach to how we solve our problems. So I hope that this video uh, has light, uh, lit some light bulbs for you in terms of getting you in the root of your mindset prepared on what to really think about and what to get more answers and clarity on before you move into things like designing a business uh, or designing a plan for your escape. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Lydia Lee again. Um, if you need to contact me, get to the Unconventionalist community page. Uh, take a look at how you can read my blogs and contact me on my website at screwthecubicle.com. Everything that I do, everything that I film on this, uh, uh, on this channel is really for you. So leave me a comment. Let me know if you implemented some of the advice that I talked about today and always let me know what would you like to learn so that I can dedicate a full topic just for you. Thanks again for joining me. And the, last time you, uh, the next time you see me is probably going to be in Portugal. Um, but for now, see you later. I know the transition from your nine to five to a more independent way of making a living can be difficult and it can be hard to know where to start. And that's why I'm inviting you to a free webinar to teach you a step-by-step -step guide of how to transition and mentally prepare you to make big changes to your life. Sign up at the link on this video to get access to this training and see you on the webinar. Hey, thank you so very much for watching Screw the Cubicle TV and don't forget to subscribe below to get all the latest cubicle crashing content on how to quit your 9 to 5 and create a life and business on your own terms.